and I'm back with another lecture video in statistics and kinesiology. This time we'll talk about measures of central tendency. Okay guys, Dr. Gooden here, and as I mentioned in the intro, we'll be talking about central tendency today, mean, median, and mode, and what it means for us as we are examining data sets. Now, this comes from chapter four of the amazing textbook, Statistics in Kinesiology by Vincent and Ware. So check it out. So first, some key terms. What does measures of central tendency even mean? Really, it's just a description of how scores tend to cluster. And these are values that describe the middle or central characteristics of a data set. So how do they, how does this data trend and where does it really cluster? Does it cluster right in the middle? Is it off to one side or the other? Is the center point of the data the same as the average of the data? And this is what we are referring to when we're talking about measures of central tendency. Contrast that with measures of variability. Measures of variability, which we'll talk about later, are descriptions of how scores tend to spread out. And it's really important to have a knowledge of both when you are examining a data set. Having both a measure of central tendency and measures of vari variability will tell you a lot about a data set. So the three primary measures of central tendency that we will be using in this class and that stats classes all over the world use and that you will probably use, honestly, for the rest of your life, are the mode and the median and the mean. So the mode is the most frequent or common score in a distribution. So if you have a group of 10 people and they all take a test and the test is out of 10 points and five of them score nines and then there's an eight and a seven and a five and a three and a one, then those five who scored nines, that would be the mode because that's the most frequent score in that group of 10 individuals who took the test. The median is a score in the distribution above and below which half of all scores fall. This is what we call the typical score. This is a score right in the middle. I'm just going to write middle because that's the easiest way to describe it. The median is the centermost score. Now, if you have an even number of scores, then there's no center score. So you would just take the average of the two center scores and that would be your median. The mean is the sum of all scores in a distribution divided by the total number of scores, or in other words, the average. So we would add up all the scores and then divide by the total number of scores and that would give us the average or the mean score. Now a little bit more detail on each of these. There's no real formula for calculating the mode. If you have a rank order listing, you can look at which score occurs most frequently. This is possible when you have 20 or fewer scores, but many more than that, and it becomes cumbersome. In a simple or grouped frequency distribution, you just look for the highest score in the frequency column. And it's important to know there can be more than one value for the mode. So maybe the distribution is bimodal or trimodal. And sometimes we don't only count the absolute highest score as the mode. So if you see a bimodal distribution where there's a mode and there's another mode, maybe one is a little higher than the other, but there's still two peaks, you would still call that bimodal. And just because they're not exactly tied for the mode or for first place for the number of frequency of scores, you would still call that bimodal. So here's what I mean. If, if I draw this frequency out and it looks like there's two peaks, I would still call that bimodal, even though there's a difference between this number of scores and this number of scores. Mode one and mode two. Now here are two examples. Here is a rank order distribution of pull-up scores, this is what we looked at in a previous video, and then a simple frequency distribution of pull-up scores. Notice the difference in the size. We have 15 scores total in the rank order distribution and 212 in the simple frequency distribution. So first, in our N of 15, our smaller data set, we just look for the number of scores that has the greatest frequency. And so I'm scanning down from the top from 18 
down to, looks like we have two 12s, looks like we have two 9s, two 8s, and so we have three different scores that are actually tied for the mode, 12, 9, and 8. So there's no single mode there. In our simple frequency distribution, all we do is we look at the frequency column and we find the largest number. And I'm scanning down. Looks like 25 is pretty big. Oh, there's a 26. And so then we would say 26 is the mode. Now, there are some disadvantages to using just the mode as your measure of central tendency to describe a data set. So the first disadvantage is that it is unstable. It's subject to change, and it may it might even change depending on your grouping methods. So what if you add a couple of bins to your group frequency, and that could change the number of scores within each bin, and maybe the mode goes from one bin down to another one just because you rearranged the bin size and therefore the bin ranges. Another disadvantage is that it is not really useful for any other calculations. It's what we call a terminal statistic. You can't really compute or further analyze it. It just is what it is. We don't use it for any other calculations. And then finally, it ignores extreme values. So let's say that all of your data is grouped over here, but then you have three outliers like way over here. If you look at the mean, that would take those outliers into account. But if you're looking at them only in the mode, you'll have no idea that there are those outliers um, because they don't factor into the mode at all. Now the next one to look at is the median, and this is the score at the 50th percentile. It's what we call the typical score. It will divide the data set in two, and if the data is odd, it will be the exact middle score. Now when there is an even number of data points, computers will often calculate the average of the two middle scores as the median, but oftentimes the top score or the higher score is also deemed the median. So really convention goes both ways. You could take the average or you could take the top score as the median if you have an even sized data set. It's useful with ordinal data or highly skewed data. Remember ordinal data is data that doesn't have a fixed unit between each of the numbers, right? So first place, second place, third place, there might be a huge gap between first and second or between second and third. It's not uniform. And then highly skewed data, as I mentioned previously, if you have outliers way over here, the mode is not great because it doesn't take those into account. The median is a little bit better because it does take those into account, meaning that those high scores pull the median over about three scores, but they don't influence the the median so much so that it pulls it way outside of the rest of the data. So it's somewhat unaffected by extreme scores. Now the mean, this is the most often used index for central tendency. And it's equal to the arithmetic average, meaning we calculate it with arithmetic. The sum of raw scores divided by the number of scores. It's the most sensitive of the central tendency indices, meaning that it's affected by every score in the distribution. Because you add all the scores together, every single score has an effect. Even those huge outlier scores that are way out here, those are added in and they pull the mean over to those outliers. They are also used for subsequent calculations of statistical inference. Just about every statistical analysis that we will perform in this class will use the mean in some way, either as a starting point or as part of the calculation or as something that informs the analysis of that statistic. But it may not be appropriate for ordinal data. And here's how we calculate it. X bar, this bar on the top would be X bar. This is the common symbol for the mean. Another common symbol is uppercase M. And this E, this epsilon right here, this just means the sum of. So this is really saying the sum of all x, which is all the scores. So the sum of all scores divided by 
the sample size. So in this case, if we're looking at 200 meter run times, and just by looking at this data, this was not a very homogeneous data set. You have some people running fairly slow up top, and some people running decently fast times at the bottom. And we wanted to calculate the mean. Well, we take the sum of all x, and that would be 194.4 if we add up all of that time. And then we divide it by 7 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 scores. Doing that will give us the number 27.77. So that was the average score, 27.77. Now 27.77 is a great descriptor for this little group of scores because it tells you that roughly half of the scores are going to be above that and roughly half below that. And it gives you a good idea of where that data set is really anchored. It doesn't really tell you the spread. So in this case, the spread is quite large. You have people running uh, down in the 23s and then people running up in the 30, almost 34s for the 200, and that's a really wide range. If we also knew a measure of variability, then that would tell us about that range. And we'll talk about that in a later video. Now, there are some relationships among the mode and median and mean that we need to talk about. So when data are distributed normally, the three measures all fall at or near the same value. So if we had a graph, instead of looking like this, if we had a frequency distribution that looked more like this, then the mean, median, and mode would all fall where that dotted line is because the most scores are right there, the middle score is right there, and the average of all scores is right there. But in this case, this black line, this black frequency distribution, we see that it's skewed, and it's skewed positively because that's where the tail is stretching out to the right side. And so the greatest number of scores is right here with the mode, this first line, line one. The middle score is here at line two, and then because of this elongated tail that stretches out and keeps going, it pulls the mean outside of where the mode is, and that would be line three because of those outliers to the right. So when should we use each of these measures of central tendency? Well, we would only want to use the mode if we just want a rough estimate of central tendency and the data are normal or nearly normal. We would want to use the median if the data are on an ordinal scale if the middle score of the group is needed, if the most typical score is needed, or if the curve is badly skewed by extreme scores. And in all other cases, we'll want to use the mean. So if the curve is normal or near normal, the data is interval or ratio, if all the available information from the data is to be considered, so we want to know the order of scores and the relative values, etc and if further calculations are required, such as standard deviation, standard scores, etc., etc. So when you're dealing with a data set, you should always calculate the mean. And then if you need to know the mode or the median, calculate those as well. It's just really good practice to get into always knowing the mean for any range of scores that you have. And it's fairly easy to calculate. In the next video, I will show you how to calculate the measures of central tendency in Excel along with converting raw scores into percentiles. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And as always, move well, live well, and teach other people to do the same.